Hi, Jesse Best students. You are welcome to our government class, SS2 students. Um, we are still on constitutional development in Nigeria. Last week, we discussed Lefloten Constitution, which was adopted in 1954. And uh, this week, we'll be discussing Independence Constitution, Constitution that marked the beginning of an independent state called Nigeria. So at the end of this class, we will be able to describe the background of the constitution. We will look at what happened from that 1954 to 1st October 1960, what transpired within this period, and what led to the introduction and adoption of independence constitution. We will also state the features of the constitution, identify the merits, and outline the demerits. At the end of this class, we'll be able to do all this. Now, if you look at this picture, you will see Sir James Wilson Robertson, the last British governor general in Nigeria the last British Governor General. Dr. Nandazikio was the last Governor General in Nigeria. This one was the last British Governor General. He came in 1954 as the Governor General of Nigeria and the ruled until the eve of 1st October 1960 when he handed over alongside Prince Alexandra a cousin to a British monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, who came, who represented Queen Elizabeth. Now let's look at the introduction. It will interest you to know that the southern part of Nigeria got her self-rule in 1957. If we trace the origin of this, we trace it to 1953 when Sir Anthony Nahoro moved a motion for self-rule in the House of Representatives. And his motion did not get the support of the MPC, the Northern People's Congress. And that resulted to a problem which was solved and settled in the London Constitutional Conference in December 1953. And uh, the British monarch promised that those who needed self-rule would get their self-rule by 1956. Unfortunately, it was delayed until 1957. After the London Constitutional Conference of 1957, a self-rule was granted to the southern part. And that of the north was proposed for in 1959. And uh, by that 1959, the northern part of Nigeria got her own self-rule. Now, the attainment of this regional self-rule was a clear indication that Nigeria, in no distant time, would secure her independence. In the London Constitutional Conference of 1957, a committee was set up that was headed by Henry Willings. Henry Willings headed this commission. If you, you remember that Nigeria was divided along three ethnic lines in 1946, which brought about regional, regionalism. And uh, Nigeria is a country that is made up of over 260 ethnic groups. So there was this agitation, there was this complaints coming from the minority groups. And the government of Robertson wanted to, you know, get advice on how to solve that problem. So he set up this committee, the Henry Willings uh, Committee, to study the problem and advise the government on what to do. So by 1958, the recommendations were tabled in the Lagos Constitutional Conference of 1958. And one of the recommendations made by Henry's committee 
was that fundamental human rights should be entrenched in the independence constitution to protect the rights of these minority groups that there may not be there may not be need for creating of more regions or more states but if fundamental human rights are entrenched the rights of everybody would be protected now in the same 1958 lagos constitutional conference uh, date for independence was also proposed to be the 1st October 1950, uh, 1960. And that's, by the way, by 1959, there was a general election that sought to, to the election of the members of the parliament. Though no political party, none of the three major political parties, the MPC, the AG, and the NCNC, uh, came out with clear court winning, with majority votes. So the Northern People's Congress, NPC, and the NCNC, the National Council for Nigerian Citizens, that was formerly known as the National Council for Nigerian Cameroon, came together and they formed what we call a coalition government. And that was how a new constitution was adopted and they called Independence Constitution of 1960. Now, if we look at this map, is Nigerian map at independence, the three region federation, showing the three regions in Nigeria, the northern region, the western region, and the eastern region. So the, the federation, the structure was like this, and it remained like this until 1963, when a new constitution was adopted and the new region was created. The new region was called Midwest region. So this is the federal structure of Nigeria at independence. And let's go to the features of independence constitution. The first feature was that the independence constitution introduced the parliamentary system of government. If you like, you can call it British parliamentary system of government. Every student in SS2, SS3, will have good understanding of what parliamentary system of government is because it was an SS1 work. You can tell the, the characteristics, you can tell the merits and the demerits of this system. That was actually what was adopted by the Independence Constitution. Now, it established by camera legislature at both federal and regional levels. Before now, Bicameral legislature was in existence in the northern region as well as in the western region. The eastern part of Nigeria had unicameral legislature. And at the federal level, it was just House of Representatives, just a unicameral legislature. But with independence constitution, a new house or chamber was established at the federal level called House of Senate. House of Senate. Though it was not an elective house at that time, the constitution allowed the regional governments to appoint their representatives into House of Senate. So that was the, the situation. And the eastern part that had been with unicameral legislature had also a second uh, chamber. So there was uh, a bicameral legislative system at both federal and the regional level. Another thing was that the independence constitution retained the federal structure that was adopted by the Lexington Constitution of 1954. The regional level having the power to make laws, the residual power, why the exclusive uh, power was vested uh, in the federal government. So the structure was retained. Now the third one, the fourth one, was that the governor general was made the ceremonial head of state. At this time, Dr. Nandazikio was the governor general, but was a mere representative of the British monarch. So ceremonial power presided with the British monarch. Why Dr. Nandazikio was, he was her representative 
in Nigeria. That was the arrangement. And this arrangement continued until 1963, when new constitution was adopted. And that new constitution made the position of Dr. Nadezikiwe a president, not governor general, but president, with ceremonial power. And the British Queen ceased to be a ceremonial head of Nigeria in 1963. But at this time, 1960, the British Queen remained the ceremonial head of Nigeria, with Dr. Nadezikiwe as his as her representative. Sorry, as her representative. Now, executive powers were conferred on the federal prime minister and regional premiers. Being a parliamentary system of government, in every parliamentary system of government, executive power is vested in the position of the prime minister. And at the regional level, the premiers. So premier at the regional level is equivalent to prime minister at the federal level. So the real executive power, the power to make policies, power to implement and enforce policies, uh, was vested in the prime minister and the premiers at the regional level. Qualification for Nigerian citizenship was also defined. Who is a Nigerian? Those who were born by Nigerian parents after independence, those who were born outside, in outside, outside the country by Nigerian parents, those whose parents were in Nigeria, or those who were born in Nigeria before independence. So the Constitution was able to you know, define who was a citizen and who wasn't a citizen. So that was also one of the provisions, officials of independence constitution. There was constitutional provision for the creation of more regions. You know, looking at the fact that Nigeria was made up of more than 260 ethnic groups, and Nigeria had only three regions, the constitution made that provision that more regions could be, you know, created from the existing regions. Even adjustments, adjustments could be made in the existing uh, regions. So Constitution made that provision. And that was the reason why by 1963 a new region was created, as I've said before now. The Midwest region was created. Federal legislature was empowered to make laws when it comes to uh, war, declaration of war, a declaration of state of emergency. The power to do that was vested in the federal parliament. The federal parliament could declare war could take decision uh, over emergency rules and so on. Now, for the first time, fundamental human rights were provided in line with the Henry, Henry Willings Minority Committee recommendations. You remember I told us that this committee was uh, inaugurated, established in 1957 during the London Constitutional Conference, and it recommended that human rights should be provided for by the next constitution, which was independence constitution. So that's, uh, uh, that's just it. Now let's go to the next one. Regional governors were empowered to remove premiers. Uh, at the regional level, we had premiers, equivalent to prime minister, the, the, the real executive head at the regional level was the premier. And the, if this premier, loses the confidence of the regional house. In other words, if regional house passes vote of no confidence on the premier, the governor has constitutional power to remove him. So that was the provision. So the regional governors were empowered to remove premiers if they lose the confidence of their regional house. Another one was that the Judicial Service Commission was established to perform advisory role to the government as regards the appointment of judges of the Supreme Court and the High Court. This same commission was abolished by 1963 Republican Constitution. When we get to that, you will see. The Senate has constitutional power to make decisions. Remember that this Senate was made up of and appointed. All the members of the Senate were appointed 
by the regional governments. Now they were saddled with the responsibility of you know making decision, taking decision on finance and the monetary issues. The constitution also made provision for its own amendment. Every constitution will always make provision for its amendment. If you want to change any clause, any provision, this is the process we take. So constitution provided for that. For amendment, provided for amendment of any clause of any provision. And I must tell you that the process was rigorous. Was rigorous. Okay, now, um, if we look at this picture, we will see three Nigerians with uh, the then Governor General, British Governor General in Nigeria, talking about Sir James Robertson. The three Nigerians are the three great nationalists representing the three regions in Nigeria. From the right hand side, you see Dr. Nadazikiwe, the, the great nationalist, followed by Chief Obafemi Awolowo. And the, at the left hand side, you will see Sir Ahmad Bello. These are great Nigerians of blessed memory that fought for the independence of Nigeria. Now let's go to the merits of independence constitution. The first merit was that independence constitution made Nigeria uh, an independent state. Because the executive council, the legislative council were all occupied by Nigerian people. So it was the government of Nigerian people. The government of Nigeria occupied by Nigerian people. Now, the second one was that with independence constitution, Nigeria qualified to join any international organization. At that time, United Nations uh, organization was there, so Nigeria could join UNO. Nigeria could become a full member of Commonwealth. And Nigeria could stand on its own to support whatever motion in any of these organizations and not standing side by side uh, alongside with the British. Because before now, every Nigerian foreign policy was pro-British. But with this independence constitution, Nigeria you know, became an independent state and could join any organization, international organization of its choice. Nigeria was free from British exploitation, the economic exploitation and uh, political exploitation ceased with the independence constitution because Nigeria could at this time stand on its own, make her economic policies and decide to relate with any government, any, any country of her choice. Nigeria had the opportunity to establish and expand economic relations, that's what I'm saying, with other nations. So with this independence constitution, Nigeria can decide which country to relate with economically. Nigeria can decide to relate with other countries, countries other than Britain, with the adoption of independence constitution. Political stability was also ensured by retaining and safeguarding existing regions. If we cast our mind to what happened in 1953, when motion for self-rule was moved, the northern region, uh, through the, uh, the northern regional assembly, passed eight-point agenda, you know, seeking for the cessation of the northern part of Nigeria. So nobody believed that Nigeria could remain one. Nigeria almost divided at that time. But with this independence constitution that was accepted by all regions, Nigeria maintained a political stability, retaining the entire regions and its boundaries. Now, much employment uh, opportunity we are created. Yes, as independence has come and with new independence uh, constitution, the positions that were before now um, occupied by the British officials were vacant for Nigerian people. So employment opportunities were available 
for Nigerian citizens. Now, if we look at this picture, you will see here, you will see Princess Alexandra, the cousin to Queen Elizabeth, who came to Nigeria, who represented Queen Elizabeth in Nigeria. And she was the one that handed over power to Nigerian people. You can see her here, standing with Sir James Robertson and the Alhaji Abokata Fuabelewa, the first and the only prime minister in Nigeria. You can also see Queen Elizabeth here also, taking a picture with Alexander's giveaway. Now, let's look at the demerits of independence constitution. In as much as this constitution had wonderful merits, you can also see some uh, areas of uh, pitfalls. The first one was that some matters remained unresolved. For example, the allocation formula, revenue allocation formula. I told you before now, under the certain constitution, that it focused on derivation rather than national interest, rather than need. So the problem was not solved. It remained. Even till today, we are still having challenges with uh, revenue allocation formula because some regions are still uh, clamoring for change, you know, criticizing the existing formula, claiming that they are marginalized and so on. So it's still a challenge till today. The legislative power of the Nigerian state was in the Act of British Parliament. Act of British Parliament. The Act that established Nigeria, the Act that established the Independence Constitution, the Act that established the, the legislature was made by British Parliament, not by Nigerian Parliament. So this situation remained until 1963, when Nigerian uh, federal parliament, you know, changed the, the status quo, and the Nigeria could, you know, uh, establish through acts their own constitution, which was a homemade constitution, and the the indigenous parliament passed the the law that established the constitution, and so on. So it is a demerit that the act that established Nigeria and the Nigerian constitution and the power of the, of the legislature was made by a foreign country and Nigeria was called an independent state. The Queen of England remained the constitutional ceremonial head. I've said it before now, that Queen of England, the British monarch, was the ceremonial head of Nigeria. That Dr. Mina Dazikiwe was a mere representative of the British monarch. So that was the situation until 1963. Nigeria's highest court of appeal was the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council in Nigeria. The Supreme Council of uh, uh, Supreme Court of Nigeria was not the final court of appeal at this time. The status quo remained that the final court of law in Nigeria was Privy Council in London. So this situation was like this until 1963, when new constitution was adopted, the Republican Constitution of 1960. Now, senators were appointed by regional governments rather than being elected. Yeah. I've said this also, that the newly established uh, chamber, the House of Senate at the federal level, was made up of appointed persons, people who were appointed by the regional government. They were not elected as members of the House of Representatives. So they were not truly people's representatives because they were not elected by the people. The process for creating new region, or state as we call them today, was made rigorous and cumbersome. It was not an easy process. Even till today, you can see all the states we have in Nigeria, we are created by military government through decrees. It has been so difficult for a civilian government to create any state because of the process that was adopted in 1960, that subsequent constitutions have been retaining. So you need to touch of the members of the federal house and the two touch of the entire state or regions. At independence, two over three of regions must be in support. Today, we have to assist states to touch 
of the 36 states, including the federal capital, must be in support for a new region, a new state to be created. So the process is quite uh, cumbersome. Now we have come to the end of our class. His assignment uh, is a past uh, question. I expect you to quickly do this assignment, submit it to our Google Classroom for grading. I look forward to receiving that. And uh, I must thank you for participating in this class. I remain Mr. Ebo Isuchuku. Thank you for being part of this class.